Earth itself is vast. Nature is vast. They're one and the same. Nature, the Earth, has been trying to produce a race that can understand it, can, can understand it from an external vantage point. And when I say race, I mean the human race, not like different skin colors and ethnicities. I actually mean humanity. So the earth and nature have been trying to produce something that can understand it externally because it only understands itself internally and you know, with things that are a part of it. In that, in its eventual desire, you know, with us human beings to understand itself in a new way from an external perspective, it kind of created consciousness, created the ability of something, uh, some kind of thinking capacity that's separate from itself that could understand it. Because nature, I wouldn't say it's expansive, but it's reciprocal. Everything in nature wants to work together. And eventually nature will start to develop beings that have other capacities because there's this residual need to understand through experience. And human beings can experience nature without feeling like they're a part of it. And that's where the problem is. So human beings, we're going to go through, we've been through many thousands of years of not understanding our connection to nature, at least, <laughs> We've reached a point to where we don't understand our connection to nature. Um, originally, that connection to nature was more um, profound, more immediate. But human kind of like structure, technology, buildings, things like that, that was always going to reach the point that we're at. The point where we are more external to nature than our ancestors have ever been. And now that we're at this point, um, for hundreds of years, we'll, we're going to start like really hurting each other and killing each other in a number of ways until we realize that there is no way we can exist separate from a reciprocal understanding and existence with nature. And then eventually we'll realize we're a part of it. And when I, when I say realize, like, yeah, there's a lot of philosophies and religions and spiritualities that talk about being a part of it, shamanism and further back, that was so solid. But we have this idea of a development, of developing technologies, of developing materials. And we have to go through how that doesn't work before we come back and be like, okay, it has to be reciprocal. Otherwise, we're all dead. And ultimately, our survival instinct, which might kick in in hundreds of years or thousands of years, will slowly start to realize, like, we, we are, no matter what planet we go to, no matter what we do here, we're always going to need to be and to have a reciprocal, a reciprocal relationship with nature, a back and forth, a symbiosis, rather than exploitation. And there's mo most economic systems now on this earth are based on exploitation. The exploitation of either a labor force or the resources of an area. Because the smartphone that I'm talking to you on right now there are, you know, th this is an iPhone, but I mean, there's all smartphones have, I mean, actually all phones have a certain degree of exploitation. Um, it's almost 100% sure that these metals, these like minor metals, they come from random places around the world, never somewhere where there's a lot of people that have a lot of money, um, that these were mined through exploitative labor, child labor a lot of the time, labor that somebody's just working to get the meal that they have for that day, not for multiple days. You know, when I say meal, I mean like two cans of food, something like that. That's exploitative. And when we're exploiting each other, What's going to eventually happen, especially with industrialization, because we're only like 150 years into industrialization or at most. We're going to start killing our environment so much, which we already are, and exploiting each other so much. And then even the people who have all the power are going to be like, we are about to die. We're about to be extinct. We have to return to a reciprocal relationship with nature. And, and what's really sad is that one thing that keeps these people from 
being like, oh, what am I going to do for my kids? Or, you know, my kid's life, my grandchildren's life, and then other people's kids, their lives after that goes back to Orthodox Christianity. Not Orthodox in of Greek or, or Russian, but um, the idea that Jesus is coming back soon, which has been a thing for as long as Christianity has been a thing. Oh, he's coming back soon. We won't have to worry about this. And then they push it off to the side because they, they were never really religious to begin with. Not really. But they use that, that little religious convenience to be like, okay, it's, Jesus is coming back soon anyway. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen. And that is when, that, honestly, that's one of the biggest blasphemies that you can do against. If you believe in the Christian God, this God having created everything, and then we're just going to use it and hope that Jesus will save us by starting the rapture or the rapture will happen, something like that. Because God forbid we actually take, a care, we actually take care of the planet that we've been given. And the animals that we've been we've been given shepherdship over, I don't think it's been given. I think nature developed us, but I'm not I'm not Christian. Um, but it's we're at an in between point because, like I said in another video, we've damaged this planet and our environment more in the last and most two hundred years than we have in the last three hundred thousand. Because honestly, before that, we don't have enough ecological information or obviously, you know, like physical archaeological history. But we are, through consumerism, through capitalism, we are expanding markets, expanding the ability to produce things for consumerism to such a degree that because capitalism is it's a, it's a dumb machine, you want to expand markets, um, so you promote consumers so that people consume more and more stuff but you're trapped on a planet with a certain amount of resources so it's almost like it's a monster that is running into a brick wall because it only knows how to run we can't get out of here soon enough for for capitalism or consumerism to be feasible we can't get out of here fast enough and we're using up resources so I see a lot of the rich, like, you know, buying bunkers and trying to get to Mars as soon as possible. And ultimately, they're still a part of the same dumb machine. Because, you know, if, if a certain number of people survive, they're just going to have to work again. <laughs> if all the workers are dead, then they're just going to have to work again. So it's an it's a, it's a instinct. It's become a capitalistic and consumer instinct to expand markets... Promote, uh, promote consumerism, but do none of the work yourself and put all the work on those who are going to be the consumers of the vast majority of what you're producing. Not you're producing, but kind of exploiting people to produce. You know, it's not always at the lowest level, which is the lowest level of the vast majority of humanity. You know, the, the, the um, foot to the paint, foot to the concrete worker. Um, in the United States, it's actually, that's not the main example I'm talking about, but yeah, there, workers do everything in the United States as well, but industry, nationalism, political ideology, it'll all play itself out. And I don't know where it will be when it does, but I do know one thing is that we will have to return to a reciprocal relationship with nature eventually. Because honestly, we're gonna run out of options before we can continue our current practices in this world or beyond it. So anyway, this has not been a very positive or uplifting video, but I hope that it has been informative or made you think um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, shoot them down in the comment section below on YouTube. And feel free to share this video wherever you so desire. As long as you give me credit, you can share it. I'm not going to hate on you for it or dislike you for it. Honestly, if you, if you don't even give me credit, as long as you don't act like it's yours, I'll be fine with it. And uh, I don't think it's really appropriate to put the, um, my Patreon on here because I, I, 
I honestly, I, I find myself at this point in like most videos where it's like, I mean, do I want to make money? Like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of in a privileged position, I suppose, where I am in the world, but I, you know, I was on, I, sometimes I feel uncomfortable about it, but the best way that you can help the channel is hit those, hit that thumbs up down there, give it a like, leave a comment that increases traffic and feel free to share it wherever you so desire. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. Love the earth, love yourself, and I'll bother you. Have a wonderful day.